Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, I'm gonna make some gyudon. Uh, gyudon is a Japanese um, dish of simmered beef, thinly sliced simmered beef. Um, so it's similar to the oyakodon I did before, so it's also also a rice bowl. Sorry, I'm replacing hinges, which is why all this stuff is here. Um, also a rice bowl, also made by simmering onions, simmering uh, and simmering meat. In this case, it's onions and beef in a broth made with um, dashi. So you can make your own dashi, but um, I'm just gonna use the I'm gonna use the powdered stuff. Um, oh, pretty soon we're going to replace this whole thing with with vertical pull-out drawers. Here it is. Hondashi, um, so powdered stuff. Um, what else am I going to need later? I'll take some tokarashi. And uh, then I need some sake. And some... I got some soy sauce and some sugar. So sake, soy sauce, dashi sugar um again that classic flavor japanese flavor combination combination um if i had some mirin which is the sweet japanese rice wine i would also use that but in this case i don't so i'm just going to use dashi sake soy sauce and sugar very simple all right so now for our beef um you know what else i'm going to do actually i'm going to also i got this pumpkin so i'm also going to cook this um pumpkin and i'm going to simmer it in uh wait for it I'm gonna simmer it in soy sauce, dashi, sake, and sugar. This is kabocha squash, um, my favorite kind of pumpkin to cook because you don't have to take the skin off. You can just cook the skin right with it. All you gotta do is scoop out the seeds and if you really feel like it, you can use those seeds too. They toast up just like regular pumpkin seeds do. I do not feel like it today. I'm gonna use like half this guy. Got some coffee grounds in my thumb. <laughs> um, we're going to cut into relatively thin slices so that it cooks fast. I'm gonna do a whole meal here today. So gyudon, um, kabocha squash, and then we'll do some cucumber. I got some cu cucumber over there and we'll make some kind of dressing for it. I'm not sure yet, but we'll figure something out. All right, so these are gonna go in here. If I had some kind of green, you can also do it. Like So like spinach, you can simmer in soy sauce, dashi, sake, sugar, and it comes out delicious. Um, it comes out especially delicious if you do it with the pumpkin. So this is powdered, powdered dashi, the brand is Hondashi. It's great stuff. Um, everybody, every Japanese household I know uses it. And by the way, over the course of this video, I am definitely going to be putting spoons into that sink and then using them again. So I'm doing it specifically because it bothers some people. And I know how clean my sink is. Sake. Gonna add some water to make that, bring that broth up. You know what I'll probably do is I will simmer this and then I'll use the exact same broth to simmer my beef. That way I don't have to dirty two pans. And you know, the broth will get a little bit of flavor from the pumpkin, but I don't really mind that going with my beef. So we're all good. All right. Oh, so for our cucumber, let's do let's do like mustard, Dijon mustard, and miso. Dijon mustard and miso and olive oil. I think that'll all be good together. What do you think? This is a psycho miso. It's a white miso. Um, this is the stuff you would like marinate cod in, black cod. Oh, look at that one. This one has a new hinge already, so it closes softly, which is nice. All right, just a little bit of miso. A little more. I know my daughter's probably just going to eat this with a spoon, so come out of there. There you go.
my mini whisk. I like these little whisks. Um, oh, not much left in there. I like these little whisks because you can get stuff out of jars, I guess, but not when there's nothing left in the jar. That spoon's too big. What I need is a ah, perfect spoon, my daughter's yogurt spoon. I'll get the stuff out of the edges. I'll get the stuff off the bottom. Huh, I should start using these more often. It's like a mini spatula. I love spatulas, all kinds of spatulas. Fish spatulas, spoon spatulas. These are actually some of my favorite spatulas. So these guys from Le Creuset, they're like nylon, but they have a silicone tip. Um, so you can use them to scrape things, but they also stir things well. Um, all right, so that water's at a simmer. Now it's coming down. Um, I don't know where you can get those. You can get them online or you can definitely, if you got a neighborhood, uh, Spatula City. Spatula City, you can get them at Spatula City. A splash of soy sauce also. And it's probably gonna want a little touch of sugar. Alright, let's taste this. Hmm. I think we need some, not agave nectar, honey, whatever this, I don't know why we have this teeny honey. Sorry, my, my fingers are, they look dirty, um, but I swear that's just because um, I've been doing a lot of gardening and they kind of got stained by the dirt we're redoing. I'm, I've been, uh, now that we're in shelter in place, I've been digging up the whole front yard. Here's the first time I'm going to reuse a spoon from the sink. All right. Honey. So we got a little bit of a sweet, savory, mustardy thing going here. I think that'll be delicious with uh, those cucumbers. Mmm, yeah, that's gonna be good. I'm gonna taste the balance of flavor on there. So when you taste things like this, you gotta remember it is gonna reduce. Um, so, when things reduce, sweetness and saltiness tend to get more concentrated. Um, Acid does too, to a degree, but you don't notice it as much. Um, so like reduced vinegar doesn't taste like much, much more acidic than regular vinegar, but salt and sugar you definitely notice. So you wanna make sure they're not too overbearing at this point, which they're not, they're good. All right. So for this, I think we're gonna do our, let's do our cucumbers in here. And what I can do, I'll just get a spoon. I'll do a little, do a little one of these. Spread it around there a little. My daughter made this bracelet for me. All right, so the other, the only other things we need for that beef 
Well, we got the sliced beef. So I bought this at the Japanese market. If you can't, so this is a sliced chuck, chuck roll. Um, if you, it doesn't have to be chuck roll, it can honestly be any thinly sliced beef. So you'd want to go to a Japanese market and look for stuff that's labeled specifically for either shabu shabu or sukiyaki, which is the thinly sliced tender beef. Um, if you can't, you know what you can do is you can either, well, if you have a good butcher, you can ask them to slice it for you um, at the butcher department. Or um, what you can do is you can buy um, cheesesteak meat, like even like frozen cheesesteak meat will work fine for this dish. So like, you know, like the steakums that you get. Um, yeah, they work, they work just fine for this. You know, obviously not the highest quality meat in those things. Um, so, you know, if that concerns you, which it does concern me to a degree, like that's why, that's why I go to the Japanese market to get this instead of buying the steakums. Oh, I want to show you a little trick. So one thing I, I notice when I'm slicing, especially cucumbers, is if I slice straight up and down like this, what sometimes happens, and it's not going to happen now because it's on video, but what sometimes happens is that the, um, A, the cucumber rides up the knife and then falls off, and sometimes it falls onto this side, and then I end up accidentally cutting it. Um, and that happens frequently when you slice like that. So when I slice, um, I do it at a very slight angle. So I don't know if you can see this. So I'll... I'll I'll show you what the first slice, so it was vertical before, and now I did it at a very slight angle, so this, so if this is vertical, that is about the angle that I go at, maybe a 10 degree angle, and by doing that, as they ride up the knife, they fall down for sure onto the right side, and sometimes they still roll back over, you know, but um, the odds that you're going to like accidentally cut pieces in half um, because they're in the way of your knife are much lower. So that's a little trick that I do. In case you're wondering, that is the, uh, the, the the theme from the end of Super Mario World after you beat the game. I don't know why it's stuck in my head, but it is. Just a little little dogarashi on here. This is a Japanese seven spice. I don't know if the video is going to get taken down for uh, making Super Mario Brothers noises with my whistling. Cucumber and miso dressing. And how's our pumpkin doing? So pumpkin is one of those vegetables you don't want it to be. You know, pumpkin, potato, you don't want them to be al dente. At least I don't. Um, I don't like having to... Shoot. With rare exceptions, sometimes potatoes good al dente, like there's certain Chinese recipes where potatoes sort of meant to be al dente and it's good that way. Um, but in general, I don't like my potatoes al dente. I like them, I like them soft, the same as I like my um, pumpkin. Let's get, I uh, know that one has spoon, soap in it now. Okay, I won't, I won't troll you that bad. I'm not going to eat soap just to, just to troll you guys. And gals, I'm sorry. I do need to get out of the habit of saying guys when I mean people of both sexes. Although I looked at my analytics and like, chances are if you're watching this, you are a guy. Um, like there's like a 93% chance or something like that. Or at least a 93% chance that if you're if you're watching it via a YouTube account and not just um, non, if you're logged into a YouTube account and you're watching this, you are most likely a guy. That I cannot deny. All right, and I'll pour a little bit of the broth over. Save just enough for what we need for the beef and onions. That's done. Onions in. Those are those onions I had left over from the other day when I made um, a Spanish tortilla, which I will link to here. That is, assuming the video is up. Sometimes I put these up out of order, so I don't know if uh, that video will be up yet, but I'm guessing it will be because I already accidentally put another video up before it. Um, the Spanish tortilla video, I think, was supposed to go up before the chilaquiles did, but I put the chilaquiles up first. And I'm not going to apologize for it. I could use a touch more sake, I think. Um, one thing about wine um, alcohol when you're cooking with it, um, so a lot of people ask me if the wine all burns off. Um, the answer is no. It's very difficult to get all of the wine in a in a uh, wine or alcohol in an alcohol and water mixture to burn off because um, so even though the boiling point of alcohol 
is lower than the boiling point of water. Um, when you combine the two at a, cer at a certain ratio, actually, the, low, the, the boiling point of the combination of them is actually lower than e the boiling point of either one of them alone. Um, and alcohol and water form what's called uh, an azeotropic mixture. Um, an azeotrope is when, um, so the, the, gas that the, the gas that's coming off, the vapors that are coming off, um, are not just one or the other, it's a mixture of the two. Um, and so that, that is why actually it's impossible to distill alcohol, I think, past like 95% or so um, without, adding, uh, without adding something like benzene or something, something that's going to um, break that azeotrope. Um, so when water's, when, when your alcohol is boiling off of here, there's always going to be a little bit of alcohol left in the pan, um, until the pan is completely dry, at which point both the water and the alcohol are going to, are going to burn off. Um, but, um, as long as you're, as long as you're, um, is it still wet? Um, there's still going to be alcohol in there. That said, um, the amount of alcohol changes depending on how you cook it. So, um, if you cook it with an open lid, it will be, tend to be, uh, burn off faster than if you cook it with a closed lid. Um, if you bring it to a boil, it cooks off faster than if you just simmer it. Um, and, uh, let's see. Oh yeah. So all that said, um, in most dishes, the amount of alcohol that's left at the end, um, the percentage that's left is very, very low. Um, so, you know, unless you are, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can make your own decisions as to why you want to avoid the alcohol. But um, if you're worried about like your kids getting drunk off of um, cooking with wine or cooking with anything, even cooking with hard liquor, um, you don't really have to worry about that. Um, if you avoid alcohol for other reasons, then um, that's up to you. <clears throat> um, the amount of alcohol that you're going to get like after reducing a sauce on the stovetop for a little while is, um, it's less alcohol than you would get in like, than the yeast would form in like a loaf of bread, you know? So you don't really have to worry about getting your kids drunk or giving your kids liver damage or any of those things. As for my, yeah, my board setup, people sometimes ask me, so this board, um, I got it from my old chef, Barbara Lynch. Um, I talked about it in some video. I can't remember which one, but I got it from her when, um, Boston, um, when Boston stopped allowing, uh, wooden boards to be used in restaurants. I was in like mm, 2002, I think something like that, 2002 or 2003. Um, so I've had this for a long time. This one's from Food 52. This one is from Early Wood. Uh, it's gorgeous. It also goes, you know, I have a bunch of Early Wood products. Um, that one you can get online. I think this one I got at like Target. These two I got at Target. Those are like my, uh, the ones that, these are the ones that I, that's chef made. Okay. These are the ones I stick on top of my other board when I'm handling meat and stuff that things that I don't want to mess up my main board for. So like this board, I would basically only put things that I'm going to serve that are ready to eat. Um, or that I would be able to serve raw on it. All right, so the onions are soft. Rice is almost cooked. Now in goes the meat. You do want to kind of let it break up a little bit. So you don't need to get these perfect slices that, um, this, this was meant for a sukiyaki, um, and they tend to give you these really nice slices and I just break them up. If you're lucky, um, you can, in my Japanese market at least, sometimes you'll find like, they'll sell trays of like the, the ends, like the bits that don't look beautiful. Um, and those are perfect for this dish, for you don't. Because they're cheaper. And because it makes no difference whether they look good or not. I'm just gonna let this simmer down. Um, you want it to be kind of wet, but not soupy. Um, because you don't want the rice to get like completely saturated. You want the rice, you want to be able to, um, at the very least, you know, pick up the rice bowl and bring it to your mouth and shovel it in. You know, if not, being able to just pick it up individually with chopsticks. Ooh, why am I having so much trouble with these? Oh, it's because my chopsticks are warped. Come on, come on. Oof. All right. Yes, you are welcome to make fun of my extra long chopstick skills. All right, that's about done. You want the beef just to cook through. And let's taste it for, let's taste it for seasoning. Delicious. Mm. Good stuff. Did I get a bowl out already? I did.
This bowl is from Heath Ceramics. We're based out of San Francisco. They make beautiful stuff that is also extremely expensive. Um, but people love giving it as gifts. Um, and people seem to enjoy giving us bowls as gifts. And we love getting bowls, um, especially when they're beautiful ones from Heath. Um, so all works out. Okay. Now, this all just goes right on top. If I had some scallions, I would probably put them on there too, but I don't. Um, if you had, uh, oh, you know what I do have? I know what I have. I have some need some Japanese um, Japanese like big chives. I don't know. What, I don't know what you would translate them. It's Japanese chives. Nida. Anyhow, I'll show you what I got. Many shoga. Oh, this is pickled ginger. Probably a little too much. Hmm. Save the rest of this for later. Good amount of this because I like it. I know Alicia likes it, and I know Audrey likes it too. Uh, also Togarashi in here. Alright. And I think it is time for dinner. Let's try a little bite of each of these. Yes, yes. Good. I approve. Hmm, I actually really like that sauce. Might write that one down. Might do it again. This one I'll finish off with some shaved shaved bonito. approve of that one. Oh, let's take this one over to the window to do it, shall we? Because that's what, I guess that's what this bit of video is going to be titled. Let's get a smaller piece. Mm-hmm. Sit. Good girl. Oh, yes, Haman, you have some. You can have some too. No shovel back up. Here you go, Haman. Good boy. All right, it's time for dinner. Audrey, Alicia, dinner time. <laughs>